waste has a lot of different causes. Even before products get to the supermarket, many of them are discarded. Either they don't meet appearance and quality standards, or they weren't packaged correctly for shipment, so they spoil prematurely. But the main cause is consumers. Usually it's simply because they buy too much or cook more than they can eat. Unfortunately, the consequences are grave. Wasted food is responsible for nearly a quarter of all environmental pollution. Rainforests are cut down in order to grow food that is wasted and clear pasture for farm animals whose meat ends up in the trash. Around the world, over a billion people are overweight, and nevertheless, just as many suffer from hunger. Economic factors also play a role in this. In the United States and Europe, people spend around 10 to 20% of their income on food. In Kenya and Pakistan, average food expenditures are around 50% of earnings. So it's no surprise that industrialized countries produce more waste than others. So why do people waste food? During our brainstorming session, our group thought about several determinants of food waste. The first determinant is that portions are often of standard size, which makes it more complex to choose the amount of food that will fulfill a person's needs without having too much which will be thrown out later. Since our target population are the students and staff of the faculty, instead of for instance shops or restaurants, we are not focusing on this determinant right now. The second determinant which we are going to focus on is that there is a lack of awareness and knowledge about food waste among students and staff in universities. A study by Richter describes that there is a paucity of awareness on how much food people waste, as well as a shortage of knowledge about the environmental consequences of this behavior. A theory that fits well into this idea about why people waste food is a theory of planned behavior. Artie and colleagues explain that the most essential aspect of this theory is a person's intention to perform a behavior. They explain that there are three aspects which are important. Perceived norms, an individual's attitude towards the behavior and self-efficacy. Perceived norms are containing what type of behavior other people who are rather similar to you execute. This can also be linked to the social learning theory, which proposes that behaviors are learned through observation or experience. For many persons, throwing away food might be a normal behavior they don't pay attention to, as they have seen many people doing it in their past, such as friends or their own parents. This behavior will then become a habit, which people can be less aware of. Additionally, during a lecture about the th theory of planned behavior, Cook explained perceived behavior control. This concept is about how a person thinks they can control the behavior they execute, which is influenced by actual control a person has over the behavior. So even when a person is aware of the problem they are causing, which must be the case when using the theory of planned behavior, people still may not feel like they have any control over the behavior they are performing, and especially don't feel like they have control over the environmental impact it has on the earth. We have looked at two theories on how behavior can be changed. First, the self-perception theory by BAM. According to this theory, people develop attitudes and opinions by observing their own behavior and drawing conclusions from it. People identify their beliefs and attitudes based on the behaviors they perform. If people, or students in our case, are induced or strongly encouraged to engage in pro-environmental behavior at the university, they may alter their everyday beliefs and behaviors to align with the pro-environmental behavior they perform in their student lives. According to them, inducing people to behave in a given manner leads them to develop positive attitudes related to the behavior. An action becomes habitual after the decision and the action are repeated many times. This makes repeated decision making unnecessary and the habit relatively independent of attitudes and beliefs. So according to self-perception theory, students will learn to stop overbuying at the university and they will apply this behavior to other places as well, such as the supermarket or at home. Previous studies have found that the third largest source of food waste in Europe is the food service industry. In order to change this, there needs to be a change in attitudes and behavior to achieve any long-term changes. One study assessed the plate waste at the canteen of a university in Lisbon for one and a half months. Visual observations before revealed that most users of the canteen wasted at least one third of the food in their dish. Therefore, they concluded that the students have to lack knowledge about the food waste of the whole university community. 
During the first stage of the study, it was identified that there are many factors which play a role in food waste that could easily be changed. There was no planning of the number of meals to be produced per day. The staff always served the same amount of meal components. Additionally, the most popular dishes and dishes that led to the most food waste could be identified. Afterwards, some dishes were left out of the menu and were prepared in smaller quantities and the portion size could be decided on by the students. After stage one, the staff started encouraging students to choose smaller portions, which was supported by motivating posters. Consumers tend to lose their sense of responsibility for the food that is wasted when eating out because they feel it is out of their control and this needs to be changed. The posters stated, if you cannot eat all the soup, ask for half or ask for the right amount of food and together we can reduce waste. These posters engaged the consumers in the food waste reduction and conveyed that they are responsible for their actions and should actively reflect on their waste behavior. A general reduction in plate waste concerning the main dishes was observed. Through visual observation, the plate waste was approximately half that of the first stage. This general improvement led to the conclusion that before the campaign, the consumers and also the staff were not aware of the amount of food that it wasted daily and were not self-conscious about their contribution to this issue. Another study observed 540 students' food waste behavior at a university. First, they used a prompt type message providing a suggestion not to waste food. The second message explained feedback-like information about food waste weight at the university in ounces, giving examples in numbers and how much food is actually wasted. Each message was presented in posters and also table tents. The students also filled out some questionnaires discussing their beliefs about sustainability and food waste in general. This questionnaire revealed that students had positive beliefs towards sustainability and were opponents of food waste. Therefore, the issue does not seem to be the improvement in beliefs, but simply reminding the students to act on their beliefs in daily life. The printed messaging campaign had a positive influence on the students' food waste behavior. The simple prompt type message simply suggesting not to waste, waste food stimulated a 50% reduction in food waste at this facility. The additional poster giving feedback about the waste at this facility did maintain the reduction in food waste but did not lead to improvement above the simple prompt messaging. Therefore, giving ounces of food that is wasted may not be that relevant for college-aged individuals and messages that focus more on social issues like child hunger might be more shocking and useful for this target group. A factual social statement may have stimulated a greater response. We made this poster to be hung in our cafeteria at the university. The poster shows how students have the option of choosing half a portion instead of a whole. By encouraging students to choose smaller portions, we hope that food waste can be reduced. A lot of people are just not aware of their own waste behavior and therefore we have tried to convince them to reflect on their own behavior. We also try to convince students not to waste food by reminding them how privileged they are to eat the food they have. A poster en engages a consumer in the food waste reduction and ensures people understand that they are partly responsible for the problem of food waste. We made it mostly visual, as previous studies have shown that visual observation was a good way to convince people to stop wasting food.